confidence level here. So my p-value from this data was 0 0.0014. I think in the last video where I showed you calculating p-values with the computer, I kind of showed you how Stat Cato got that number. And uh, significance level uh, alpha was 0 0.05, right? So significance level alpha is 0 0.05. So the question is, is, is this a low p-value or is this a high p-value? Well, you can see 0.0014 p-value is definitely lower than the 0.05 significance level. Okay, so 0.0014 uh, p-value is lower than 0.05. Again, if you convert these to percentages, 0.05 would be 5%. 0.0014 would be 0.14%, right? That's way lower than even 1%. It's 14 hundredths of a percent. So we definitely have a low p-value here. So we got a low p-value, and I know the claim is HA. The claim is the alternative hypothesis. So let's go back to our chart. Right? We got a low p-value, and the claim is HA. So my conclusion should be there is significant evidence to support the claim. The low p-value means I'm rejecting the null hypothesis. I think the null hypothesis is wrong, which means I'm kind of supporting HA. I think that means HA might be correct. So again, I'm supporting HA. So my conclusion should be there is significant evidence to support the claim. Let me get out of the way a little bit to support the claim that uh, the population mean normal body temperature is less than 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so if you're kind of looking at this, again, there is significant evidence to support the claim, but notice I didn't just write that. If you just wrote there is significant evidence to support the claim, nobody sort of knows what you're talking about, right? So um, again, it's always good to write, I always like to speak the words back to the person. So whatever they said in the article, that's what I like to speak that back. So if the scientist said, oh, we think the population mean average normal body temperature is less than 98.6, I'll say those words back to them. So there is significant evidence to support the claim that population mean normal body temperature is less than 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, we are assuming that this data met all the assumptions. That's actually really important. If it did not meet all the assumptions for the test, then this low p-value would not be considered evidence anymore. So as long as this was random sample data, and it met the, it was independent and met the 30 or normal requirement. I think the sample size was 50, so um, then it would, it would can be this low p value would be considered evidence. Okay? Um, so it's always good to write what the claim was there so people understand what you're saying. So again, what does this mean? It looks very statistics jargon, right? It looks very weird how we write things in stats. You're basically saying that we agree with the scientists, we agree with the scientists that. Uh, normal body temperature is less than 98.6, and we have some evidence uh, to back up that scientist, right? That's kind of the idea behind it. All right, let's look at a, another example. Now I'm looking at a, um, I was asking stat students uh, at my college, what, um, what do they eat breakfast in the morning? And, um, my, uh, so I'm, I'm looking at the, trying to figure out the, uh, looking at a, a hypothesis test involving a population percentage of the stat students at my college that eat breakfast. Again, we're going to assume that this data met all the assumptions, okay? So assumptions for proportion would be random, independent, um, and then um, uh, at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. Um, it, by the way, if it wasn't not a random sample, you could still get away with it if it was re if the data sample data was representative of the population, and I think this did 
meet that assumption at least. It wasn't actually a random sample, but it was a representative sample. It was actually a census of one semester. So we're going to say that, that we're assuming that that does represent all the students from all semesters. Okay, so assuming that this met all the assumptions, I put the data in. My null hypothesis is that about 40% uh, of uh, students, um, actually I want, I'm sorry, this, I want this to be, this was not eat breakfast. Forgot to put the word not. Uh, so, how, what percentage of student, stat students do not eat breakfast in the morning? And my, my claim was that the population percentage is 40%. About 40% of our stat students do not eat breakfast in the morning. They're too busy trying to get to class. Um, so, and that was my claim, that 40%, I was testing my own claim that I thought about 40% of the students would, um, would uh, not eat breakfast in the morning. So the opposite of that, the alternative would be not equal to 40%. So that, that was 0 0.4. So pi equals 0.4 would be the null hypothesis, and pi is not equal to 0.4 was the alternative. So this was like a two-tailed, one population proportion test. Now my p-value came out to 0 0.702. That's a really high p-value. P-values are supposed to be close to 0. 0 0.702, you're talking, if we multiply that by 100, and turned it into a percentage, that would be about, what, 70.2%? That's a, that's a really high p-value. It's definitely higher than 0 0.10, our significance level. So our significance level alpha was 0 0.10, or 10%. And again, 70% is definitely a lot higher than 10%. So we have a high p-value. So even if this data met the assumptions, a high p-value is going to be considered not significant evidence. So we do not have significant evidence. Okay. So let's think. So let's think about this. We have a high p-value, right? High p-value, and the claim was the null hypothesis, right? I used equal to 0.4 as my claim. So in this case, again, I'll just go back over to the chart. I have a high p-value, and the claim was the null hypothesis. So. There's not significant evidence to reject the claim. That would be my conclusion. There's not significant evidence to reject the claim. All right, so let's write that down. There is not significant evidence to reject the claim that the population percentage of stat students at COC, that's my college, um, is 40%. Or if you could say population proportion is 0.4. Okay, so there's not significant evidence to reject the claim that the population percentage of stat students at COC is 40%. No, this is not proving that, that it is 40%. This is not saying that, that, that uh, we know it's 40%. What it means is we do not have evidence to reject it. Again, that would mean it could be true. Think of this one as a not reject situation. It could be true, but I really don't have evidence. Okay, I do have some sa sampling variabilities involved and my p-value is high, right? So I can't really tell for sure that the null is right. All I can say is that it, I don't have evidence to reject it, okay? I know it's kind of tricky, but it's very important that you get what you can and cannot say when you're dealing with conclusions, okay? All right, so that's my introduction to writing conclusions. Uh, this is uh, Matt show and Intro Stats, and I will see you next time.